So today we're here with Burton Roberts, a local Pittsburgher and tech veteran, whom I had the pleasure to meet about 12 years ago for the first time when we were talking about C1 reports and cross tab uh, reporting. Uh, a few years have passed, and we're excited to learn about Burton's experience migrating from Silverlight to HTML5, which is a, an experience that a lot of our customers are going through. So it's great to have him here to talk about his company, his experiences. Uh, Burton, why don't you go ahead and share with our viewers a little bit about your company, uh, your products, your services, your experiences. Uh, I own a company, uh, it's called Extended Day Services. We provide child care, uh, school aged child care in the school districts in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. We rent space from the school districts and we take care of the kids after school and before school. And if they have half day kindergarten, we, we take care of them on the other half of the day for parents who are working. And uh, we started this business uh, back in uh, 1991. We started in a pilot project. In Upper St. Clair, we started with about, uh, seven kids or ten kids, lost money like crazy. And today, uh, we're serving, uh, during the school year, we're serving 1,200 kids across eight school districts in 17 locations. And we run eight summer camps. Uh, and, uh, and in the summer, uh, we, we're watching these kids for 11 hours. We have about 120 employees. So uh, it's it's grown it's quite a bit. It's, it's grown. Really, it's yeah. been a successful business. Uh, but maybe maybe you could tell us a little bit about because it seems like you wear two hats. You're, you're the entrepreneur, business owner. At the same time, you are a nerd, a developer, and yeah. you're actually writing code. Right. Can you tell us what the most challenging and rewarding aspects of those two things are? How they relate? Well, I, I've done some work for other people. I mean, I have, I have been hired by other firms uh, to do software development. But when you, when it's your own company, there's no friction between what the boss wants and, what, and, and your interpretation of what he wants and how to deliver it. So, so you know, there's no calling somebody in a foreign country or, or you know, communicating with the developer who knows nothing about the business or your business. He doesn't have to learn your business. You already know your business. It cuts down on the cost of development by a huge amount when you're not communicating. You know, you're communicating with yourself. If somebody says, oh, I need this, I need that. And it's your own business, and you know the value of what they need. And you know when to say, you don't really need that. And you can say that if you're, if you're, the, if you're a programmer and, and, and your, uh, your client says, oh, we, we, want, uh, uh, we want it to do such and such a thing, and we don't want to press any buttons, we just want you to talk to it. Right. You, know, you can't say, no, you don't. <laughs> That's too hard to do. We're not doing that. But if, you, but if it's your own business, you get to say, no, we're not talking into a microphone to make this work. You're, you're actually going to have to use your mouse and press a button and, uh, and have things happen. You know, you know what's hard to do and you know what's easy to do and you know, you know what, what will work well enough. You don't have to worry about certain things, about like styling and things to impress your client because my employees have to use my software. They have, you know, so I don't have to make a fancy button. Right. I just have to make it. To right, right, right. You've done that. Right. I just have to make it productive. That's really my only goal is productivity. And, and I said two hats, but there's actually an extra hat that goes in there. Because in addition to being business owner and one of the main developers, you also get to select the technologies that you're going to use. Yes. Right? And if you're going to use third party controls or, or roll your own, can you tell us a little bit about that process? How do you select, you know, I'm going to use Microsoft, I'm going to use Google, I'm going to use third party controls? Well, selecting Microsoft was, was, just, was partly a faith-based thing. I selected Microsoft back in 1991 when they came out with Access. And that was my first big selection. Uh, and once I dived into that, I, 
and it worked for me. Basically, I was all in. So when they came out with the next technology, which was uh, Visual Studio uh, .NET, which was the whole .NET stuff, stuff with the was in right, 2000, uh, this my, for my first, actually my second outside job, uh, a friend of mine actually owned another company asked, you needed something. You needed a whole overhaul actually, a big product. And, and .NET was in beta, and I said, well, this is my, I actually saw this as my opportunity to learn the .NET stack. SQL, I didn't even know SQL Server, really. I was still in Access. So I learned SQL Server, I learned WinForms, I learned uh, VB.NET at the time. And, uh, and, and then that, I jumped into that. Uh, and actually was called foolish by some people because I was jumping into it when it was in beta. And people said, how do you know? You know you're investing in all this. But it was just faith, and, and it panned out for me. And I, at the same time, I was living in Pittsburgh, and I needed, uh, I needed a, a fancy, uh, well, I needed a grid control for this project, and I needed a reporting for this project. And, uh, I don't think the reporting was really uh, something that was you could get out of the box, particularly reporting. You couldn't get out of the box in one form. So I really had to look for third party uh, support, a third party. And that's when I actually found, uh, I don't think you were called component one at the time. I think you were called something else, but, but it was component, it became component one at some point. And I found C1 reports, and I found the flex good control. And the other control, the other data grid control, uh, which I can't remember the name of it at this point. But you had two data grid controls. I used them both for the true DB grid. The true DB grid, there you go. Right. So I, I guess you could say that uh, with Microsoft, you actually made a bet. Right. And I mean, you're betting on, it's, it's a pretty safe bet to bet on right. companies like Microsoft and Google and IBM and things like that. Uh, you couldn't bet on Google. They, they didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I was bigger than Google at the time. <laughs> so you'd say that things are, have changed a lot since that yes. time until now. What's the main change, the main thing that has changed from your perspective in this technology world? Well, for me, the, the big change was XAML who came along. That was the first big, big change. Well, the first big change, of course, was .NET, but then from .NET then, uh, to XAML and Entity Framework uh, also, I think, was, was from going from ADO.NET to Entity Framework was, was, was another big change. And in, it was my, and since it was already, uh, I, had, I had placed two bets on Microsoft, and they had both panned out. So, you know, if you're in Las Vegas and you're at that wheel, you, you, you might as well keep Staying at the wheel that's winning. Yes. So I so I went all in right. with XAML. And, 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 and when I got Silverlight. Both WPF and Silverlight? And Silverlight. Okay. And what it gave me a path to web development, which I didn't have. Yet. Right. I didn't learn the ASP.NET stack. I, uh, I didn't yet have use for it. Right. And I, I imagine the big advantage of XAML at that time was exactly that. You could do desktop and web. Right, you could do migration. That's right. You, you could do Silverlight, you could do WPF, and basically you were learning the same stuff. We all know that the XAML, the XAML stack has been going through some changes. Silverlight has been uh, no longer in favor. Right. So how does that affect you today? Well, it's a, it's, it's, it's a real issue. I am one of the one of those people that you might find online complaining about the death of Silverlight. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those too. Uh, uh, I was. It would have been nice if they could have just fixed whatever the problem was. And when they came out with the uh, with Windows 10, this was fine. This was the final nail in the coffin. When they when well, there were two there were two final nails in the coffin. First was when the uh, the Google uh, browser, uh, the Chrome browser, stopped supporting the Silverlight plugin. That was 
that was that was one nail. I should have I should have got the message when that nail. I should have told it, but I but I waited, and then Windows 10 came out, and the default browser, the Edge browser. I remember that's shocking. Shocking! It was shocking. I was looking online. I said, "Well, this, they have to support Solo. This has to support Solo." And I and they did, and it did not, and then that was like saying, "Hey, it was like Microsoft saying, hey, we don't want you to use this product anymore.'" I remember asking some Microsoft people about that. Why is it that the new browser doesn't support Serialite? And they couldn't answer. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's it, strange. It would seem to me that they could have done. That they do have both browsers that come with Windows 10. So the Internet Explorer is there, and it does support, but it's not the default browser. And your clients, if they're not tech savvy, they don't see the, they see an E on there, and they don't know the difference. Yeah. You can't tell them, hey, go to another browser. I mean, it's kind of ironic that Chrome, the latest version of Chrome, supports it, and the latest version of IE doesn't. Yeah, does the latest, because I, I think Chrome doesn't support it at this point, the plugin. Does it? Like, no, no, no. So you yeah, check Safari, that. That's yeah, supposed, yeah, that's yeah. supposed to be. Safari still does, and mm -hmm. Firefox still does. So, so, but you would think that Microsoft could have done something where they could have, when you could detect that you were going to a Silverlight site and switched you over to the other browser somehow. That couldn't have been too hard to figure out. Yeah, but they couldn't do it. So, so now Steve Jobs decided to plug in. Well, I know there's a security issue, but I don't really understand. I have the guy, the guy who lives next door to me works at Google, and uh, he tried to explain to me the other day that there's a security issue, and I just don't understand it. And I, I didn't get into it with him, so but I have no choice. I have to migrate. I have like three or four Silverlight sites that are being used by not just my staff, but they're being used by my clients, the parents, the kids that come to my daycare. They, one was one to pay their, their bill, and one is to register their kids. Uh, then I have another one that's for my, for my employees to enter their hours into the, the cloud database. Uh, and, my, and even my employees, I have 100 employees, as they come in, I can't even depend that they have computers anymore. They have, they come in with tablets now, right? Right, it's iPads, and they want to be able to do it on their iPad, and if they don't have... Uh, can't blame them for that. Yeah. Right, yeah, and they say, I you know, and I say, well, I have to, I have to, I have no choice. I have to make the change. So, so um, we're really happy when you went to Echo at Apple Conference and found out there's a migration path from Super well, that's to yes, HTML5. Yes, there, there is a migration path. You've written a paper. Yeah. But the paper assumes that you know JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> or, TypeScript. <laughs> or TypeScript. And I don't know those things yet. But, but, but I haven't done So you still use VB or you're using I use C Sharp. C -sharp. Yeah, I, C -sharp. I know it's really close to It's close. Yeah. yeah, it's very, very close. Yeah, I, I now, I understand that. Yeah. I have a, I'm already starting to yeah, study that, these things. Knowing that you started about 15 years ago and all the groups that you jumped through, yeah. I can tell you this one's going to be very easy. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's, no just that, it's just that you, XAML, the whole WPF Silverlight thing, was a huge mountain to climb. Right. It, the, the learning curve was, was pretty steep, but once you got there, it was quite satisfying. And it's like anything, you become, become competent and fluent in a technology that was very difficult to learn. And, uh, and, for, and, and in a way, a bit rare. Uh, it's hard to let go. Absolutely. But I assume you're talking mostly about the MVVM architecture as opposed to language syntax stuff. Like right. That. Well, the MVVM thing was, was, That's was the huge. Real. That was the real advantage of it. Yeah. Right. And that's the sweet thing about this migration path. Because if you get to use, to keep using MVVM, yeah. then most of your investment is, is preserved. Is preserved. On the client side, yeah. the, the server side yeah. stays the same, the client side's side changes a little bit, but it's mostly syntax changes. The right. architecture is preserved. So. Well, I, I, I'm, it looks like I'm going to be going all in here pretty soon. 
uh, going down that direction. I, I've, I've already had the uh, payment site rewritten, but it's in MDC. I've had help from an outside firm. I wrote the back end and all the, all the data access code I wrote, basically the same as from the Silverlight site. And they, are, and they were interpreting my spaghetti Silverlight uh, code, which actually wasn't so much because it's MDDM, but, uh, uh, but they've, they've interpreted it and they've re rewritten that, that part of it. Uh, and it's nice that uh, I'm overseeing it and I feel like more on separate. It's the first time I've actually had to hire a programmer to work for You didn't ask him to use the microphone and interpret the voice commands? No, I did not ask him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want my people just to be able to read that number in. No, no. They, <laughs> they have to type their credit card numbers. <laughs> well, this, I think this has been a great talk. I don't know if, if, if you'd like to share uh, some of the impressions that we didn't, we didn't touch upon, the big challenges that you're facing, things that excite you, something to wrap up or Well, I'm, I'm now getting excited about HTML5 and Wishmo and, and, and Angular and TypeScript and uh, it's now, uh, if I look at it as just a whole new, something new to be excited about and get that old enthusiasm back, yeah. uh, actually, it, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, you, you, once I let go, of, uh, uh, I, I, I can get excited and uh, I think it'll be a, a, a nice journey. Yeah, I think it's like you're, you're going to be doing the same thing that I did a little while ago because I was also a Silverlight enthusiast. Yeah. I wrote a lot of Silverlight code, uh, and I didn't. I wasn't ready to migrate to HTML5 or JavaScript until Angular came out and TypeScript. Those were the two technologies that made it finally seem okay. That this is now a platform for developing applications. So I have an intuition that you, you're going to feel about the same, kind of the same steps. And it gives me uh, gives me a lot of work to do in the future if I want to rewrite all the WPF that I've written in the past five years. It gives me it gives me another five years of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, I know you, this is relevant for this the, the interview. If you show this later, but it's funny once you've been around you know this field for a couple of years, maybe more than ten years. Mm -hmm. It seems like you, you end up doing. Solving the same problem over and over again yeah. you know, using different technologies. Yeah. I'd like to feel that you know you, you get slightly better solutions each time. But it, it's at the same time it's funny. It's like you know I'm running a grid for Equifax and Alpha.net, for Xamarin, and Alpha yeah. JavaScript. It's a grid. It's a different yeah. grid every time. Yeah. Uh, but you'd like to think that it's 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 the same problem getting solved in slightly better ways each time, and you get to iterate. And it's like we were, we were talking about this before. Uh, an application, as long as it's successful, you have to keep changing it and evolving it, right? And the you're never done. Yeah, you're only done when it dies and it tries. Right. If it's successful, you have to keep changing it. Right. Well, my business is always changing. Exactly. And uh, I'm always getting new requests uh, for something, a different way to do it, a better way for them to do exactly. it. And uh, uh, that's the great thing. We're, we're sort of going all the way back to the beginning of the interview, but it's really the, the, the great thing about being close to these technologies and being able to do them yourself. You, know, you have that immediate, oh, I need a report. Oh, here it is. And here's the button that you have to press to get there. Thanks for yeah. being here, Thanks talking for to us, for sharing your knowledge Thank and your experiences. You.